Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Cameron. I'm just getting over COVID, so hopefully my voice uh, lasts through the whole presentation. Uh, I'll be talking about conspiracy brokers, our paper trying to understand the monetization of YouTube conspiracy theories. Um, so by now, it's been pretty well established that advertising is a lucrative incentive for publishers to push misinformation. Uh, a study by Braun in 2019 found that some fake news websites made tens of thousands of dollars during the 2016 election uh, in the United States. We monitored the advertisements on a group of conspiracy videos to try to understand the kinds of advertising and the, the companies that are profiting off of this kind of content. Uh, we categorize the advertisements by business and content type and find relatively fewer, but more often predatory ads on conspiracy videos. And we find a large number of conspiracy creators that utilize various offsite revenue generation opportunities at higher rates than mainstream YouTube channels. So why conspiracies, you might ask? Um, they actually for, uh, function as a, as a major spread of misinformation. The claim that vaccines are harmful is uh, alarming on its own, but when you package it in a narrative that Bill Gates is trying to inject you with a microchip, um, that becomes a lot more exciting and a lot more likely to bring uh, viewers to your page. Uh, it's like a clickbait headline, basically. Uh, they can have a very real impact as well. 15% uh, of Americans believe that the government, media, and financial worlds in the United States are controlled by a group of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who run a global child sex trafficking operation. Um, and this is a central claim in the QAnon conspiracy that got popular in 2020. Uh, and if you wanna see the real world impact, you can look no further than the 2021 Capitol riots uh, where these are three different conspiracies that are all present in the kind of protest materials here. Uh, there's Pelosi is Satan, which is directly related to this uh, cabal of pedophiles running the government. Um, there's Stop the Steal, which was a, a conspiracy pushed by Trump and other politicians in the U.S. government that the election was stolen from uh, the rightful winners of the election or Trump. And then in the back here, you can see an explicit reference to the QAnon conspiracy. Um, this is actually a Q. Uh, there's a little Q there, but you can't see it because it's blocked by the yellow flag. So why YouTube? Um, previous misinformation work has focused mostly on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the text data is much more accessible and much easier to analyze, so it makes sense. But YouTube is a huge platform for conspiracy content creators and viewers. Uh, a study by the Texas Tech University found that nearly all surveyed respondents at a Flat Earth convention said YouTube was their introduction to conspiracy theories. Uh, and they also found more conspiracy theories through YouTube uh, after uh, going there for Flat Earth content. Uh, it's also the second most visited website in the United States with built-in revenue generation for creators. Uh, so it makes it a very attractive option for anybody trying to monetize their content. Uh, as an example of some of the creators we looked at, this is Trey Smith, one of the largest conspiracy channels in our data set. Uh, they often style themselves as kind of alternative news, uh, giving their take on current events. Uh, and as well, you can see a lot of active discussion happens in the comments where they talk about their theories. And we found that engagement was actually much higher among the conspiracy channels um, than among the mainstream channels uh, as well. For data collection, uh, we compiled a list of conspiracy videos from two uh, studies. The Ledwich study uh, manually labeled a smaller group of channels um, that we could confidently say were conspiracy channels, uh, whereas the Clark study uh, did a much larger and automatic classification of uh, a large number of conspiracy channels. Uh, to compare these, we collected ads from mainstream YouTube content. Um, to find these videos, we just started at the homepage of YouTube and then took random walks down the recommendation engine. And we repeated these walks kind of multiple times for each crawler run. Uh, each of these data sets had two associated accounts in different locations. Uh, crucially, we turned ad personalization off. Um, so this means according to Google, we were only receiving ads based on the video we were watching, the time of day and the location. So we also collected ads throughout the time of day to control for those two variables. Uh, our collection period ran from June to October of 2021. Uh, then we took the advertisements that we found, we labeled them. Uh, so we grouped the ads by the base domain in the URL. That means that chanel.com slash watches and chanel.com slash perfume would be the same advertiser or chanel.com. Um, this allowed us to annotate uh, spe specifically the types of businesses and the, um, and the kind of content that they had, if not the actual advertisement itself. Um, we then annotated based on two independent categorizations. So business type refers to uh, the kind of broader cat categorization of the business. So is it a merchant or is it something, or is it, for example, a self-improvement service? Uh, and then we also annotated based on content type. Um, so that's the actual content of the advertisement. Is it selling beauty products or maybe you know an entertainment device? 
Uh, after this, we labeled the top ads that we saw only in the conspiracy set, the top ads that we saw only in the control set, top ads we saw in both, and then a tail sample of the ads that we saw much less frequently. Um, this means that while we only accounted for a small portion of the unique advertisers, we did account for almost 90% of all ad impressions that we saw in the labeling, uh, giving us a good idea of the types of ads that people are seeing, if not the uh, specific companies that are um, surfacing them. And quickly, before we get into the analysis, I just want to talk about um, something uh, for ad target um, for ad targeting processes. So ad targeting refers to the parameters that an advertiser uses to describe their target customer. This means that an advertiser might say, I want to show my ad to everybody who likes baseball. Um, delivery refers to YouTube's process of determining which users will have the best response. Um, so this would be they take these uh, baseball advertisements and they serve and they have 10 different videos that um, discuss baseball content, and but they know that five of those videos uh, have users who are much more likely to respond to an advertisement, so they show the ad on those videos rather than the videos with people who will not respond. We can't say exactly which of these caused a difference in advertising because we can't observe that from the outside, but we can observe that said difference does occur through one of these mechanisms. And in fact, we did see a pretty big difference in advertising between the conspiracy and control sets. Um, the most common ads did appear in both data sets. So these ads uh, accounted for only tw around 20% of the advertisers, but almost 90% of all of our impressions. Um, however, there was a, a large difference in these blanket advertisers between the conspiracy set, with accounting for only 77% of the conspiracy impressions, while it accounted for 90% of the control impressions. Uh, and that difference does suggest actual differentiation since the advertisers carrying out little targeting that advertise all over the site actually get shown less on the conspiracy uh, videos. Um, Self-improvement ads were greatly overrepresented in the conspiracy set. You can see here they accounted for 20% of all conspiracy impressions while only 2% of all control impressions. Uh, and these coincided with business and insurance ads, which often sold um, kind of fraudulent investment schemes that we'll talk about in a sec uh, that you know promised uh, immense returns for very little effort. Um, electronics, beauty, and alternative health ads were also more common in the conspiracy set. Uh, these were often really low quality products uh, as um, the major retailers, medical and software ads were uh, much more common in control. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about some of the predatory advertising we saw, which was overall almost 11 times as likely to appear on conspiracy videos than it was on control. Uh, the first kind of predatory ad that we saw and by far the most common were these financial scams. Uh, essentially, they're low quality business and investment webinars. Sometimes they were books. Uh, they promised that you can make a ton of money with very little effort, as you can see from an example here on the side. Um, they're similar to ads that were featured in a recent FTC lawsuit from a robocall crackdown. Um, these ads used a combination of robocalls, online surveys and digital advertising to find victims for their scams. Um, and these were more than 20 times as common in the conspiracy set, accounting for 11% of all conspiracy impressions versus just half a percent of control impressions. Uh, the next kind of uh, scam that we saw were these insurance lead generation scams. Um, so admittedly, most of the insurance ads we saw were legitimate. They were from companies like State Farm or Liberty Mutual. Um, however, conspiracy videos had this unique presence of lead generation websites that were also featured in a recent FTC lawsuit. Um, here's an example on the side. Essentially, these websites promise you some great benefit if you just fill out the survey and see if you qualify. Uh, once you fill out the survey, um, actually, if you click anywhere on this page, including on the privacy policy, it just redirects you to a survey. Once you fill out the survey, they essentially sell your data to low quality or fraudulent, fraudulent invest, uh, insurance companies uh, who can later contact you to try to get your money. Uh, if you look at the Better Business Bureau page for this specific uh, company, um, they have a very low rating with lots of consumers complaining that after they filled out this survey, they got, were inundated with spam calls and spam advertisements uh, and had a very hard time getting their data removed from this service. Uh, the last kind of uh, deceptive advertising we saw were for various kind of dubious products. 95% um, of these did use affiliate marketing. So they had some form of affiliate marketing scam uh, to sell their product. Uh, they accounted for only 3% of the conspiracy set, but less than 0.1% of the control set impressions with a 50 times higher prevalence in the conspiracy set. Uh, and they had differing levels of potential harm. So the products range from a $50 ear cleaning device that luckily you can get for just $30 on this website 
uh, to 5G proof clothing, um, which is supposed to protect you from 5G and other EMF radiation. Uh, both of these have not been uh, tested by the FDA, but they're relatively harmless and they're not going to hurt anybody. They're just going to maybe waste a little bit of money. However, some of the more harmful stuff were untested supplements claiming to cure diabetes uh, entirely and essential oils that promise immortality, such as this ad, which I included because it's kind of the quintessential advertisement designed to target conspiracy theorists. Um, so there's specific references to evangelical Christianity, which is also very common uh, among the conspiracy videos on YouTube. Um, as well, they make a lot of unspecific claims uh, without, you know, uh, like saying, oh, is this the antidote to old age? Maybe you can live forever if you just buy our book and follow these essential oils. Um, and as well, specifically, they, they reference this huge lie fed to Christians by the spoonful. Um, and specifically referencing some, you know, shadow council that's trying to hide the truth from you, which is also kind of the most common thread among conspiracy theories. Um, next, we're going to talk about uh, some of the demonetization or removal that happens for these videos. So YouTube does, in fact, do some moderation. They crack down on QAnon after the Capitol riots, for instance. Um, and we did find that advertising was much more common on control videos, uh, meaning that they are doing some amount of sanitization of the of these conspiracy videos. Um, and uh, the issue being that demonization can be hard to measure because ad delivery is stochastic. Uh, it means that when you visit a video, if we don't see an advertisement, that doesn't necessarily mean that the video is demonetized. We might have just been unlucky and so an advertisement wasn't served on that video. However, 95% of monetized videos did see an ad within 10 visits and we averaged 11 visits per video. Um, so that means that it's pretty likely that if we didn't see an ad on a video ever, that it was in fact demonetized. And in fact, we didn't see an ad on 82% of conspiracy videos, uh, but only 43% of conspiracy channels, uh, which means that this kind of demonetization moderation happens on both a video and a channel level. Uh, the rate of video removal was also higher on demonetized channels, uh, which is consistent with YouTube's stated moderation policies. Uh, namely that repeated enforcement action against the channel will lead to its demonetization. Um, finally, I want to talk about some of the offsite strategies um, that we found. Uh, to find these, we searched for the occurrences of the most used URLs, URLs in a video description, uh, and then we looked for the URLs that uh, were often used to monetize content. We found that conspiracy channels were 2.3 times as likely to use at least one method of these offsite revenue generation uh, opportunities and 5.2 times as likely to use multiple methods uh, than control channels. Uh, surprisingly, though, demonetization actually decreased the amount of offsite strategies used by these channels. Uh, we think this is due to cross platform moderation strategies. So, Patreon, Amazon, and PayPal all took uh, action against QAnon accounts uh, around the same time that YouTube did, which might effectively decrease the options for demonetized channels on YouTube. Uh, to reference these uh, offsite, big offsite money generation. However, sites like BitChute and Rumble, uh, which style themselves as kind of alternative video sites uh, where free speech is welcome and you can post whatever you want, remained popular among demonetized channels, um, giving kind of further evidence for the idea that, that cross-platform moderation can help to reduce these kinds of uh, revenue generation. Uh, it's also supported by a recent Quad Ribeiro paper, which investigates offsite strategies uh, in more depth um, for problematic videos, and I encourage anybody to check that out who's interested. Uh, our research provides additional backing for calls for greater cross-platform moderation. So as I said, when multiple websites all crack down on the same topic, it does a better job of addressing these monetary incentives. However, we do need a better understanding of the cross-platform networks for monetizing misinformation uh, in order to really understand this. Um, as well, transparency in advertising is key. Um, so having a library where we can see what advertisements are run, how they are targeted, and how much is spent on them would give us a much better understanding of how these fraudsters carry out their attacks, as well as the kinds of um, targeting methods and delivery mechanisms that actually lead to these advertisements being served to people. Um, better consumer protection for digital ad scams would also be great. Uh, as we saw, there have been some lawsuits recently, but a comprehensive understanding of how these scams take place on digital platforms uh, would go a long way. Um, unfortunately, turning off personalization did let us see content-based targeting, but it prevented us from seeing behavioral or demographic targeting. Um, and other confounders like demographic groups might actually bleed into this content-based targeting. So if YouTube picks up on the fact that 
uh, seniors most often watch these videos, then they might just serve ads that target seniors to those videos, even if the uh, ad personalization is turned off. Uh, but we can't really tell this without greater ad transparency. Uh, as well, we did not infer the intent behind offsite links, which is why we limited our analysis to uh, websites that were commonly used for monetization, like Patreon, PayPal, and Amazon. Um, and also, it's important to compare to advertising for other content areas. So it'd be nice to see what kind of ads show up on news videos on YouTube, for instance. Um, so in, in conclusion, we find a lower rate of advertising among conspiracy content, but a significantly higher rate of predatory ads. Uh, we identify a large network of offsite monetization opportunities as well, leveraged by these conspiracy creators. Uh, and assuming that Google's ad delivery system is effective, uh, they may inadvertently be assisting scammers to find victims by serving these fraudulent advertisements to uh, the people who are most likely to respond to them. Um, thanks everyone for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Then I have one. Um, you already mentioned that it's not clear whether it's um, yeah, the, the um, results you're observing, whether they originate um, yeah, from the from difference in the targeting or the YouTube algorithm. But maybe you also have some thought of, the, uh, of it, um, when it's more likely that it's the ad algorithm or that it's uh, the targeting by the companies. Yeah, um, I mean, so there's no option for, you know, targeting conspiracy content uh, when you're looking, when you're, if you're an advertiser, you know, you can target based on things like baseball or interests, but it's hard to say like what exactly uh, conspiracy content is. So I don't, I imagine at least some of it has to do with the, the delivery simply because you can't say I want to target conspiracy videos um, as well. I mean, this is also something we're doing in a follow-up study. So we're trying to um, isolate the kind of uh, delivery versus personalization um, by uh, leaving ad personalization on, but um, curating kind of the interests that are created for these profiles so we can see uh, what ads are being surfaced based on interest and what ads are being surfaced based on delivery. I would imagine it's, you know, some combination of the two, um, which not a great answer, but that's that's all we can say. Yeah. I see. Thank you very much. Very interesting.